I've got a couple slides. I'll be real brief here. It's six o'clock. You guys probably don't want to be sitting here for an hour. We'll go do some stuff uh, over on the turf strip, and then we'll come back and then do some more. Kind of makes sense. So we titled it Reversing Life with a postural focus. So we'll be talking about some of the uh, daily postural requirements that we all do and some things that I'm gonna teach you how to do at home I want you to be really good at to kind of reverse some of those stresses. So, quick agenda here again. I'm gonna talk about myself just a little bit so you guys can know who I am so I'm not a stranger anymore. But we'll talk about some daily postural requirements, as I mentioned, and then we'll learn what to do about it. So, who am I? My name is Ian McIntosh. As you can see, that's me. Uh, I graduated from Logan Chiropractic School in April of 21. I am also a high school wrestling coach over in Fenton, so I do that in the winter. So winters are pretty busy, but uh, I love coaching and giving back. It's something that I, it's something that I really enjoy. I played football in college, and probably the coolest thing up here in 2022, I was voted the Great Guy Award by my wife. So I, hold, I cherish that one. I hold on to that one. So, why are we talking about posture? I had a fantastic quote that I really love. Good posture can be successfully acquired only when the entire mechanism of the body is under perfect control. What does that kind of mean? We are gonna take a full system approach here from head to toe, trying to cover up all our bases because if you have some issues and you only cover one thing, sometimes you can, you can miss some things and you really won't achieve that perfect posture, that good posture without covering all your bases. I'm taking the entire mechanism, which is your body, top to bottom, into control. So, three things we're gonna talk about here. The daily postural requirements for most people. We sit, we drive and look at our phones, and we walk. For most people, this is what we do. Now, you guys are the exception. You guys work out, so that's awesome. You're already ahead of the curve. But still, we think about what do we do most of the time. We sit. On average, about seven to nine and a half hours a day. That's a lot of time sitting, right? So there's going to be some postural adaptations that happen to our body when we just assume that position for a long period of time. And then from there, uh, number two is phone, which that's kind of lumped in the same category as driving, if you will. Looking at a phone, driving, it's very similar. Uh, and then number three, walking. <laughs> right. So we're going to talk about sitting first and how do we kind of reverse some of the things that happen to us while we sit. So, a couple things here. You guys look at this side. I'll talk about this stuff over here. We look at the low back first. What happens to our low back when we sit? It's just rounded a little bit, just naturally. We kind of assume that kind of rounded back posture. Look at the hip. The hip is flexed, meaning it's up this way. It's not extended behind us, it's flexed. The knee is also flexed, right? We don't sit with our our, our legs straight right here, so we're flexed, bent, flexed, bent, and then kind of flexed in the low back as well. And then our upper body, usually, because a lot of people work on computers, we also kind of have this rounded, kind of flexed posture as well. So here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start about talking about how to reverse some of the things that we, things that happen to our body when we sit. So we're gonna talk about soft tissue work, and some mobilizations. First things first, when it comes to soft tissue, we're gonna use a foam roller. I brought one for everyone here so we can use them. We're going to do what we call mashes, which is just a soft tissue thing to roll out, to work out, work tension out. We're gonna mash two key areas. Posterior hip, or kind of that side butt cheek area, and the quad. Why do we do that? When we sit this way, if you can imagine, when we flex the thigh, or the, that hip bone, shortens this distance a little bit. So then we get up and walk, it's kind of tight. So when we, we mash it and it gives that good tissue length that decreases the tension, it feels really good. Same thing for the side of the hip. 
So mobilizations for reversing the sitting would be some extensions, right? If we flex our low back forward, getting into an extended posture, whether it be a statically or just holding an extended posture or repetitively is going to do our body a little bit of good. And then a stretch for the hip as well, where we assume the, what we call the quad psoas stretch, which you can do on a chair, you can do it on the ground. Some people call it the couch stretch. Uh, looks like that. So four things we're going to do here in just a minute. And a quick disclaimer before we do any of these, if there's some sore spots, don't just mash the crap out of them. Let's gently <laughs> ease our way in. We don't want to leave here more sore than we started. But I can almost guarantee when we're when we're getting down on the ground, finding some areas, you're gonna there's gonna be some spots. We're like, holy cow, that is tight. Probably means we need to spend some time working on that area. I, I got I got to ask a question often sure. about foam rollers. Yes. Do I want to? A one foot one, a two foot one, a three foot one, doesn't matter. And What's the difference? The density, does, do I want a soft one, a medium one, or do I want a really hard one? Great question. So for the length of the foam roller, the thing you want is you just want a foam roller that can effectively get to that area. For example, if I have a five foot foam roller and I'm trying to mash my quad, I'm only going to use a section that big. So that extra four and a half feet, just kind of just extra. A lot harder to carry around. So the length is, I, I kind of think the shorter the better. So kind of like the ones that I brought are the, that length, I think it's 12 inches maybe, something like a, a foot. Oh, that's a really good length. And the firmness of it, that's total preference. If you're somebody that likes soft tissue work, you do it all the time, usually you want a more firm one because you can get in, work out that spot exactly where you know how and get off of it. If you're new to it, the softer is more forgiving. So if you're new, go with the softer one. If you're experienced, then you can use a more firm one. Some people like, if you see them online, they, they, it's, it's a cylinder and then it's got like ribs, ribbed all the way around it, those little pressure points. Those are for people that really love that, that mashing pressure. They can go in, put that ribbed part right on a spot, work it out and just be done with them. It feels really good. It's a great question. So. Let's all head over and find a foam roller. Leave everything where it's at and let's go find a foam roller. Yeah? Okay. Mm. We're gonna start here. <laughs> you, it is very hard to make it. <laughs> now, if as soon as you sit down, you're feeling already some tender spots, yeah. you could just roll back and forth here. I've never sat on before, isn't that funny? That's never thought about it. Yeah, this is great actually. <laughs> or, if that doesn't, if that, it doesn't do much for you, we're gonna work one side. So I'm gonna work my left side. So I'm gonna orient my left butt cheek down on the foam roll. Oh, yeah. Now, the side we're working, that leg's gonna be almost limp. So, as little pressure on that side as possible. And we're gonna go up and down about two and a half, three inches. And you'll know when you find a spot where you're like, ooh, that, ooh, that feels, that feels gnarly. Anybody yeah. finding a good spot? Yeah. You know, like one that hurts? Right, <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly. A good spot is one that feels uh, not great. <laughs> yeah. so when I explain it, I explain it like a, like a, a very firm massage kind of yeah. Exactly. So sit right on the top of it, switch that over to the other butt cheek. The side you're using, that leg's pretty limp. Up and down, nice and slow. All fours, and let's say I'll use my right leg first. I just kind of just start to work my way down right onto the quad. Now, same way the leg we're rolling is not going to have as much weight on it. And we're going to go up and down nice and gently because you're going to find some areas that are not feeling too great. So mobilizations now. Gotta love it. It hurts so good. <laughs> it's on the wall now. So, next thing we're going to do is a mobilization. A 20-year-old, they would absolutely love it. So we're going to start slow. Put the foam rollers to the side. We're all going to get into this position. We're going to be laying on our stomachs with our elbows underneath us. Really, really.
really good. If this feels great, you can stay here. If you need a little bit more, we're going to transition up onto our hands here, nice and gentle. So you guys like, like you, you know this from our wall? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh, like God. elbows is good for you. Don't, don't, be, don't be afraid to stay on your elbows. I'm just done. just yeah, show in some that's extra. Like yeah. baby cobra. For the low back is going to be a stretch for the hip and the quad. So this is the only one I'm going to have everyone kind of come over just a little bit because I'm going to do it on the turf. So first way to do it, if you have a foam roller, that makes it way easier because we want the hip and the knee to be behind us. So you start here. So if I'm starting here, my knee's in front, I want my knee behind my hip. Everybody see it? So we want the knee to be behind our pelvis. We just lean forward. We've already mobilized our low back, so we don't need more low back no, extension. We need the hip socket to extend. So we lean forward, sending our hip forward. Now, once you start doing it, you'll, you'll feel that. You'll be like, ooh, it just kind of lights up that front of the thigh there. So let's all try that. Exactly. So, where should I feel it? Upright. I think we want to lean oh, up. Oh, okay. there you oh. go. <laughs> I hope we all found some some soft tissue spots and some stretches that are going to be absolutely awesome. And you guys are going to be proficient at doing this at home. We're going to move on to the next one. Next one is, there's a disclaimer, next one is going to be <laughs> the phone or driving position. So if, actually Chris, do you mind clipping them on real quick again? So if you were to look at my head from the side, if I'm upright over my shoulders, my head is, the driving and foam position is either down or what we call this protruded head posture, mm -hmm. right? When we're in the car, we're like this, we're looking, and you know, it's, we assume this posture. If you get headaches, mm -hmm. a lot of it is because you're wearing this posture all the time. The same way you get a sore back from certain postures, you can get a sore neck and headaches from certain postures as well. So, Chris, thank you. So we look at a couple key areas, the upper neck, the lower neck, and the shoulder. And usually this is a great picture of the uh, looking down. So we look at the upper neck usually gets extended, right? And then the low neck is flexed. That's that head protrusion posture. Some people do this when they're on the computer. If it's, if it's small font, it's a guarantee that you're going to go in. You're, you're like, what? what does that say? I do the same thing. I do the same thing. So, some things we're going to work on for this one is we're going to do some soft tissue on the shoulder and the side of the neck. For that, I've got lacrosse balls uh, for us to use. And then some stretches, we're going to stretch the pec and the trap. Why do we do the pec? Because the pec muscle across the front of the chest is the biggest muscle to pull your shoulders this way. All right, so if we drive and we're on our phones. Can you see how that it assumes that kind of shortened position? Same way the quads, if you're in that position for a long period of time, your muscle wants to stay in that shortened position. So then we try to open it up and it's like it doesn't want to. So we gotta stretch that out. Mm -hmm. So the soft tissue work on the neck and the shoulder, and then we're gonna stretch out the pec and the trap. So one more time, we're gonna head on over and uh, do some of these. So we can share wall space, we can find a wall space. First thing we're going to do is put this lacrosse ball on the top of the shoulder blade and we're going to press it against the wall and go back and forth about an inch. No. All right. <laughs> Next spot we're going to work on with the lacrosse ball is going to be the side and the back of the neck. So if everyone can kind of see the side of my neck here. For me, I have a collar, and you want to think right where that collar ends on the side of your neck, right there in the, not directly in the back, not directly on the side, kind of that 45 degree on spot. Put that lacrosse ball in your hand and push that into the side of your neck. Start gentle because you might have some sore spots you didn't know were there. Now, side, right between the side and the back, now you want to find a sore spot. Some people are higher, some people are lower, and give as much pressure as you can stand 
pushing into the side of your neck. It just little wiggles up and down, an inch up, an inch down, find a sore spot. There we go. Now we're gonna get the chest next. So let's say I wanted to stretch out my right pec. I'm gonna put that side right on the wall. Not too picky about where your arm is. For example, some people like to put it up here. Some people like a little bit lower. Find it where you feel the best stretch and it's pretty simple. This blocks your arm motion. We lean away, you'll feel it immediately. You can get a little bit of the neck if you lean your head away as well. Just getting a real good stretch to the front of the chest, the shoulder, and all that stuff. Let's try. Back itself and the side of the neck. So let's say I wanted to stretch my right side. So we'll all do this together in steps. I'm gonna put my right hand behind my neck or as far back as you can do. So right hand behind the back, reach our right shoulder and elbow to the ground. What? Oh. <laughs> Reaching it okay. to the ground. Now. We're going to lean our, our head away. I'm going to lean my head to the left. Some people that might feel a stretch already. And as we kind of work in a little bit more, you can pull the back of your head and start to look up towards the ceiling. Pull your head, pull the back of your head and start to look up towards the ceiling as we reach our shoulder down. All right, let's move on to our last one of the day. Sorry, hello, my bad. No. Walking. Walking. Most people, I fall into the same rut every now and again. I wake up, I walk to the car, I sit in the car, I go to work, walk to my desk, sit in my desk. I'm just in this position a lot. And I'm even, I'm some one of those few people that I'm like, gosh, I'm in this position. I need to do some things. All the things we're talking about, I try to actually do during the week because I know it makes my body feel really good. But if you didn't know that it would make you feel better, we just kind of just assume that posture, you just stay there. And then we end up kind of walking like that, right? Our head and neck tend to be flexed forward, our upper back rounded forward because we've got that chronic tight chest and shoulder. Our pelvis, because our quads are so tight, gets tilted forward just ever so slightly. That makes the low back have a lot of tension and you have really tight calves. Does anyone here have really, really tight calves? I do. Right My calves are like rocks. One thing, one thing people can never get is they can never get rid of their tight calves. Sometimes it's not the calves that are the problem. Sometimes if you were to think about your pelvis from the side, if we twist forward, there's two muscles on the very back. Hamstring, but underneath the hamstring is the calf. Hamstring actually, in most people, can accommodate that forward tilting of our pelvis pretty well. So now you only have one option of a muscle on the back side of the body to get really tight, it's the calves. How do we combat that? We get length to the front side, and then it loosens up the back side, AKA the calves. Usually it works for a lot of people, myself included. I have really, really tight calves. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do some soft tissue and some mobilizations. We're going to do two of them, the quad again, because quad is super, super important. I want you guys to be amazing and proficient at doing the quad. And then we're gonna do one that is the QL muscle. It's in the low back. It looks like that. It connects the, that's a picture looking at the back side of a skeleton with muscles. It's these red muscles connects the top of the pelvis to every vertebra and then up to the bottom of our ribs. When that is tight, we have crazy tension on the back of our low back. And when we, when we get to that area, it's gonna be one of those things where we roll it out, a little uncomfortable, and you'll stand up and I'll see a whole bunch of these, you're like, ooh, that feels pretty good. We'll see a whole bunch of those. So we're gonna do the quad, the QL, and we're gonna do the upper back because we stretched out the chest already, but being a chiropractor, I know the importance of work on the spine specifically, so we're gonna do some for the upper back, getting some extension into that so we can stand tall and have this beautiful posture that we all want to have. Make sense? Mm -hmm. This will be the last one. Let's head on over and try it. Let me get down. Now, hands for balance. We're going to roll 
until we get that on our low back. And this is the same way we do the hip. We like to do one side first. So roll over onto the left side. Elbow's going to be down for balance. You want to kind of be about a 45 degree angle. The side we're working, that leg can kind of be limp on the ground to decrease the tension on some of that side of the muscle. And we just kind of lean in. This is one there's not a ton of motion, but we get on about a 45 degree angle and we kind of just lean our way into it. When you relax, it's going to work its way into the side of the low back. It's going to feel really, really good. Just under our shoulder blades. So your shoulder blades should be just touching the top of the foam roller. Once we get there, we'll go hands behind, interlock your fingers, hands behind the head, elbows together, gets the shoulder blades out of the way a little bit. And we're gonna take a big breath in and very slowly exhale our way back over the top. Now this one is one where it's going to be more repetition based. We lean back, enjoy that end range, and then we lean forward. Let's do it again. Big breath in, exhale, passively over the top of the foam roller. Go to this one. Number one, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoy this. I hope yes. you learned something yeah, here. Uh, and then kind of number two, just talking about what my role is in, in this setting, right? You guys are Chris's people. I'm not trying to steal you away from Chris. The more you guys are in here working out, the better. I'm so happy that you guys are in here working out. What my role can be is if you are working out and you think during the week, Monday through Sunday or whatever days you work out, if you have to modify something, just keep in the back of your mind, hey, I might be a resource to you to get whatever that area is that needs modified, yeah. getting that up, up to snuff a little bit, right? Because all the stuff that you do in here with Chris is amazing. I've talked to him. I know he does really good work with you guys. I want you to keep doing that. Yeah. The more you can be in here doing the stuff and the workouts that he has for you, the better you're going to be in life, the better your body is going to feel. It's, it's all good stuff. So. There's QR codes. If you've never been to a chiropractor, it would be your best experience with a chiropractor ever. Just because we're a little bit different. We have a little more functional focus. We like to teach stuff like this is soft tissue work, the mobilizations in between visits. I really think it's awesome. If you have been to a chiropractor, hey, maybe I'll be the best one you've ever met. If not, no pressure, right? All, the whole purpose of today, this was a free seminar. I didn't want any of your guys' money. I wanted to come here and, and share something with you guys that I think is, is highly valuable. So uh, that's all we're going to do today. Uh, does anyone have any questions about anything? I do have a I want to ask you about. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we'll do that here in just a second. Anyone, anybody, anybody got any other questions? Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much.